Hi, here we want to discuss one um, somewhat simple way of measuring discrimination. So one possible measure of discrimination is just to look at the difference in mean wages. Um, if we're talking about discrimination on uh, gender, then we can just look at what the average female makes and what the average male makes and take the difference and call it discrimination. But the problem with that is we may not be looking at equally skilled men and women. And so some of that difference might be attributed to the fact that women have different skills or abilities or different levels of schooling or training than men. And it may not just be uh, really discrimination. And so a better measure would be if we compare the wages of equally skilled workers. So if we take a woman and a man who have the same same level of skill, the same amount of education, that sort of thing, and we look at the difference in their wages, then we have a much better picture of how much that of that wage differential can be attributed to discrimination. So um, the Ohaka decomposition is a technique that does that. It takes that raw wage differential and it divides it into the portion that's related to a difference in skills and a portion that we then could attribute instead to um, labor market discrimination. So it works something like this. This graph sort of describes this composition. So you can see that women's earnings function is different from the men's earning function. So if we, excuse me, if we look just at the, um, the relationship between wage on the vertical axis and schooling on the horizontal axis, then, um, and we just assume that school, so th this is a really simple version of this model where we're just going to assume that schooling is the only thing that affects someone's wage. We know that's not true in the real world, but this is just to keep this example simple. Um, we'll say that the only thing that, de that really determines, um, your productivity is how much school you have. And so, um, the amount of wage differential that we can attribute to a difference in schooling would be the uh, the difference in skill part, and then all the other wage difference would be something we could consider to be discrimination if schooling is the only thing that affects someone's productivity. So that's our sort of simplifying assumption here. So let's look at um, how men's wages are determined based on their level of schooling versus how women's wages are determined based based on their level of schooling. So. Um, the the symbols here with the bar over them, that bar indicates an average. So let's assume that or that the data show that the average woman has SF bar years of schooling. The average man has SM bar years of schooling. So the average male has more schooling than the average female. So we should expect to see that men's wages would be higher if, if schooling is something that affects your productivity. Um, <clears throat> and when men's wages are higher than women's, uh, part of that can be attributed just to the fact that they have different skill levels or different levels of schooling. It's not necessarily indicative totally of, um, of discrimination. So if we, um, if we, consider that, then we can look at um, the raw wage differential between men and women. So the average male who earns SM bar or has SM bar years of schooling will earn WM bar wages, right? So if we go from that average schooling for males up to the male wage function, earnings function, we'll see what their uh, the average male weight makes in terms of their wages. And for the average female, we go from the average level of schooling of a female up to the women's earning function. And we see that the average female earns WF bar in wages. And so that raw wage differential is just the, the average male's wage minus the average female's wage. Now, how much of that is due to a difference in schooling versus due to discrimination. How could we figure that out? Well, the best way to look at that is to think about this average female. Okay, so let's look at the average female. She gets an SF bar level of schooling. Because she's a woman, she her earnings 
are determined by this orange line here, right? So the orange line shows us how schooling translates into wages for women. Because she's a woman, she earns this WF bar um, in wages. If that exact same woman were a man, so with exactly the same level of schooling, if she were a man, her wages would be determined by the black line that shows a man's earnings function. And so if she were a man, she'd be earning this level of income, WF, or this wage, WF. And so with exactly the same amount of schooling, if she's a woman, she earns WF bar. If she's a man, she earns WF. And so there is where we see discrimination. The difference between what she would earn if she were a man and what she earns because she's a woman, that's where we see the discrimination. Um, and the rest of that difference is the rest of the, the difference in um, in wage between men and women is because the men earn a different level of schooling. Um, so really the best way to measure or to look at whether there's discrimination going on is to look at that woman, that average woman, and see with exactly the same skill set, the exactly the same number of years that sh of schooling that she has, what if she were a man? And what would she be earning? And that difference that's that's not because of a different level of schooling, but just because she's a woman and not a man, that's the difference that we can attribute to discrimination. So let's look at this um, in a little bit different way using an example. So suppose years of schooling, S, is the only variable that affects earnings. Again, a very simplifying assumption, but it helps us out here uh, to keep this simple. So, And then say that the equations for weekly salaries of male and female workers are given here. So these would just be the equations of those lines that we saw in the previous graph. Um, and these lines, these equations are determined using um, statistical methods of, of regression and things like that that you may learn about in your stats classes. We won't get into the details of that here. But um, so suppose that males' wages are determined by that first, this first um, uh, equation here where 500 plus 100 times the years of schooling is the wage and females' wages are 300 plus 75 times the years of schooling. And then suppose uh, also that on average, men get 14 years of schooling and women have 12 years of schooling. Okay, so now using that information, what's the male-female wage differential? Well, the wage differential is just the difference between the average, the wage for an average male and the wage for an average female. So to figure that out, we'll just take this, uh, the number of years of schooling for the average male and plug it into the male wage uh, or wage function, right? And then we'll take the number of years of schooling for the average female and plug it into the female wage function. And when we do that, we get, so we have 750 times 90, or plus 93 times 15, that 15 being the average years of schooling for a male, minus 400 plus 85 times 13, which is the average school, years of schooling for a female. Um, when we do that, we see that the wage differential um, in this example is $640. So on average, men make $640 more than women. But we also see that men get more schooling than women. So it makes sense that men would have a higher wage than women. Um, but let's see if we can figure out how much of that differential is due to discrimination and then how much of it is just because men get more school than women. So to figure out how much of that differential is due to discrimination, we're going to look at the wage for the average female if she were a male and then subtract that from the wage for the average female. Um, knowing that she is not male, that she is a female. So to do that, we're going to take the average female, 13 years of schooling, and plug that into the male wage function and see what she would be making if she were a man. So 750 plus 93 times 13, the average years of schooling for a woman. And then we're going to subtract what that, what that average female actually makes. So again, plug in um, that average years of schooling for a woman into the the woman the female wage function. Um, and so when we do that, we get an answer of 454. That 454 tells us that 454 out of the 640 wage gap, 
right? So remember the, the average wage of a man versus a woman is a $640 wage gap there. Um, 454 of those dollars can be attributed to discrimination. Just the fact that she's a woman, not a man, because we can take that average female and turn her into a man <laughs> and see what she would be making if she were a man. And um, and the difference between that and what she makes because she's a woman is four hundred fifty four dollars. And the rest of that wage differential um, up from the four fifty four up to the six forty. That's the part that we can attribute to just a difference in schooling. So, like I said, because men on average get more schooling than women, we would expect them to have a, a larger uh, way, a higher wage than women, um, just because of differences in productivity, differences in schooling. Um, but what this shows, what this Ohaka decomposition shows us is that the wage gap should not be as large as it is, that it would be much smaller if it were only due to that difference in schooling. And we see a pretty big uh, amount of that gap is is attributable to um, discrimination. So again, this is a really sort of simplified version of this model, the Ohaka decomposition, but it kind of shows you some of the tools that we have. Um, if we can use statistics uh, to do these regression models and things like that, we have some, some pretty neat tools to try to tease out how much of that wage differential is due to differences in productivity and how much of it is actually due to differences in, um, or, or just differences in, in non-market characteristics. So just due to discrimination, um, we can do this not just for gender, but for ethnicities, for race, um, for blue eyes versus green eyes, or for anything, um, any non-market characteristic that we suspect there may be, uh, discrimination going on.